Now there's this wonderful Twitter account called uh, Pancake Brick Fried by Korox, which uh, did an analysis of the congressional report. And uh, he, he went on some of the more interesting aspects, which we're going to discuss here. Uh, there, is, there are 45 pages, by the way, uh, talking about gaming extremists. Uh, and this is something that I find very interesting, because on one hand, as we talked in the previous video, you, you have the Matt Walshes of the world, right? Like the people who think that no one should have any hobby outside of Jesus. Uh, and ironically, these people exist, okay? They, they, let's cut the crap and pretend that they don't, because they do. They do exist. Like every time they see something that they don't like, and it's outside of their Sunday church, and their traditional values, they'll be like, no, we need to ban it. We need... Meanwhile, the left, when they see that something is against their values, they're like, okay, how do we co-opt it? How do we infiltrate it and subvert it and get it to cause to push our values instead? And this is why they freak out when there is even like the most remote backlash against something trivial as video games. This is why they are absolutely furious when anime exists. Because they have worked so hard to co-opt and infiltrate Western entertainment and make sure that the message is the correct one. So when you have an anime like Legacy of the Shield Hero, where uh, a woman falsely accuses the hero of rape, they're like, well, that is a very uncomfortable subject. We don't want to discuss or even entertain this opinion because then uh, our other grifts won't function properly, right? So they're going to say, oh, anime, oh my god, she's but a child, oh, the, the dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Because they can't co-opt it, so then they try to destroy it. But the right doesn't even try to co-opt things. The, the, the right is like, no, we need to ban everything. And, of course, uh, it doesn't work because it is a multi-billion dollar industry, so they can't ban video games. Video games get co-opted by their ideological opponents, and they can't actually control, like, like, no matter how strict of a parent you are, once your kid grows up, he is going to watch entertainment, and at that point, he is going to be indoctrinated by the ideological opponents. So, so here we have um, this uh, interesting thing, which, again, comes from the government. Take into account that it comes from the Democrats. It, it doesn't come from the Republicans. So, like, when you say the gov the U.S. government, you, you're talking about the Democrats, right? Like, they're in power. Uh, the person at the head of this institution, as you can see, is named by the U.S. president, which is Joe Biden. So, you need to take that into account. Now, as you see, uh, GAO links video games with domestic extremism and claim that they influence domestic terrorist attacks. Uh, th this is a story as old as time. <coughs> I think even Donald Trump was saying it. It's like, yes, uh, video games are violent. Therefore, people cause violence. I mean, this is just part and parcel for the American mindset. I, I, you know what? I, I shouldn't say American. I guess it's the Anglosphere mindset. We, we actually didn't have this here in Romania. Like, we never had the mindset, oh, if the kid watches slasher movies, uh, then he's going to become a psycho. They had that in the Anglosphere. Uh, now it's, uh, oh... If the person watches anime, if they watch My Hero Academia, because those girls are 16 and they're lewd cover dress, that person must be a pedophile. Like, like, like is, is this gaslighting of trying to attempt that if a person likes a specific type of art, that, then they must agree with everything that's happening in it, right? So, like, if you like uh, Iliad, the, the Homer Iliad, uh, you must be a warmongering person that, that just can't wait to get on a battlefield and start hacking and slashing at the enemy. I, I don't know what to say about this mindset, but apparently it is so prevailed that it actually ends up making legislation. So as you can see, they are claiming that uh, live streamers are at the point of origin of extremism, which then moves through YouTube and Twitter and finally infects a large group of people. Yeah, so like all these social media platforms that have uh, all of these terms of service and, and make absolutely sure that people don't use hate speech. You know, like They are over-policing people to the point where you can say stuff in real life, but you can't say them online. Uh, you can say stuff in a um, national print, right? So like if you have a newspaper, you have freedom of the press, but you don't have it on YouTube. Uh, they believe that is still dangerous. Okay, so now the ADL comes into play and we're going to talk about it in a bit. Uh, they unironically say that humor, memes, and positive aesthetics are a threat. Again, do you think that if you poll the American public, they agree with this? Like, if you if you were to poll 
uh, all of the Republicans and Democrats in a in a actual survey, right, or in a referendum. Do do you think that they are going to agree that memes and humor and positive aesthetics are a threat? We're going to go into the positive aesthetics in a bit, but now you understand why all the the female characters that come out in Western entertainment in the last four years need to look like they're disfigured, right? Because positive aesthetics are harmful. Um, of course, they they link shooters to video games. Um, I, I I love this one, like those gosh darn extremists making friends while playing online. Some experts, right? Like, like this is the type of language that I also found in the document. Weasel words. Uh, some experts may, could, possibly cause. The reason they do this is because they do not want to be held accountable if they actually make a point and stick by it, right? So, like, for instance, if I were to say, if you don't have a roof to your house, rain will come down inside your home. Because this is a statement that I can stand by it. If you disagree with me, it's like, all right, well, let's make the experiment. Let's see if I'm wrong. When they say, well, video games may cause violence... Well, you can't disprove them because, yes, like, they may. Someone somewhere out of 350 million people in America may be mentally deficient, does not have the ability of differentiating between fact from fiction. So, yeah, like, it may. But do we live in a society of safetyism where, where we have to ban every single hobby because it may? Because everything may be dangerous. Like, stairs themselves may be dangerous, right? An old person may fall down the stairs. So, is this why we need to just abolish stairs? This is their line of thinking, right? So um, some experts we spoke with explained that violent extremists use online gaming platforms to engage with and befriend other gamers. In particular, they say that this strategy builds trust and social bonds in gay play settings and makes it easier to spread their ideas. Right, but like, you also have people that genuinely make friends and connections in these video games. And this is why you notice that every single game company now requires you to make an account to log in they require a user and a password, and every time you go online, everything is recorded by an AI, like Sony does it. Um, but not only that, they, they also have terms of service and chaperons and like more and more stuff that you can't say. And by the way, corporations love working with the government. They absolutely do, because number one, they get to harvest information from you. So they get to harvest data that they will sell to third parties while you play their AAA bullshit. Uh, secondly... If they ban you, you get to buy the game again, right? So imagine you're playing League of Legends. You already have like 10 or 20 skins. And um, you, you get banned for racismus or whatever. Well, a lot of people who are addicted to the game will say, well, I want to buy it again. So now you buy the game again. Well, League of Legends, you don't buy it. But like you make another account. And then you want to farm those 10 and 20 skins that you lost. So, so the companies love this grift, right? Like the companies love working with the government for this issue. The government loves working with the companies so that they can bypass the constitution because they can't do this in real life. They, they can't just silence people because you have the first amendment. Um, so this is a good way of laundering censorship through the private sector. And everyone benefits except the people. Now, if you look here, like uh, their own experts say that there is no evidence to link violent extremism with video games, but they press on regardless. They mentioned Reddit Jannies, right? Uh, now, now, what's interesting about Reddit Jannies is that on Reddit, if you make a sub, if you create a subreddit, Reddit forces you to censor your own community, right? So they do it for free. It's... Companies give organizations and other special interest groups a reporting backdoor, right? This was revealed in the Twitter file. So basically, gaming companies probably have a, a backdoor so that the government can now come in. Like, game, basically, gaming companies are becoming more and more like the social media platforms. This is what it's all about. Uh, like, the same things you're not allowed to say uh, on social media, you're not going to be allowed to say in video games. It, it's to control people's interactions. Like, they want to have people stay home, stay safe. And if you're home, you're going to interact with other people online, and everything you do online should be censored uh, based on what the Democrats want, right? Because, again, like, the, the, this is the Democrats. It's not the Republicans that are doing this. Uh, the FBI and the DHS have direct links to social media companies, as we saw. Uh, but this is interesting. Uh, the reason the ADL is mentioned is that uh, many NGOs had experts that were given here, and the ADL has three, right? So you got, like, three people coming from the ADL. 
Uh, I, I do think that the ADL is uh, probably one of the main pillar stones when it comes to censorship in the United States of America right now. Uh, because they, they wield a tremendous power when it comes to advertisers. Elon Musk said as much that when the ADL uh, got upset at Twitter, all the advertisers pulled out. Uh, and uh, Elon Musk uh, does think that they're, they're the main people responsible for this, right? So basically, if you please the ADL, then they allow the advertisers to return. If not, then it's permanently suspended. And I don't think that the ADL are representing Jewish interests. I think they're representing the Democrats' interests. I mean, time and time again, we see it. They, they are an extended arm of the Democrat Party. Um, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.